is Mina Pimple, who is the Deputy Director for Asia for the UN Millennium Campaign. I have an advantage and a disadvantage. Advantage of becoming the last speaker is many points uh, are already covered, so I can re-emphasize them. And the disadvantage is I don't know what to say because uh, Cyrus and Amitabh in the morning actually covered a number of points that I, I wanted to say. The kind of vision that I would look at from the perspective of Mumbai and uh, the kind of work that I have done in the city for about 20 years leads me to ask some questions and those I'll start with those questions the kind of growth that we are talking about in relation to Mumbai I think there are five crises that that growth entails and how we deal with those crises is what I think is the key challenge is the growth that Mumbai will witness is that growth will be jobless that's the first question what kinds of jobs it creates who will be employed on those jobs? Where will be the populations which are more than 60-70% of Mumbai's uh, slum dwellers, uh, informal um, service workers? How will they get accommodated? In what kinds of job situation will they get accommodated? Will they have adequate incomes to sustain themselves in the city? That's one crisis. The second crisis is the growth going to be rootless in terms of is the growth going to create an issue of alienation which then translates in itself into the issue of violence, into the issue of breaking down the community structures, breaking down the networks, because that is what one is witnessing over the last 10 years or so. Is the growth rootless? As some of the earlier speakers pointed out, the challenge of the growth, is it ruthless in terms of the growing inequities, the top 20% or 5% as Cyrus puts it, actually benefiting from the majority of the development activities, majority of the investment in the city, and 70 to 80% of the people being actually excluded from the process other than earning their incomes. Is the growth, as in the morning, the first opening session Saskia pointed out in terms of the democracy, is the growth going to be voiceless? Will the voices of the people be muzzled? Will the participation of the people be muzzled because to keep this large metropolis going? I think that's going to be the challenge in terms of the intensity of the, of the oppression. Is the growth going to be futureless? Is the growth going to be sustainable or not? And sustainable in terms of the ecological sustainability, in terms of the sustainability of actually reaching out to the population in, in general and especially the population which is excluded at this point of time. If you look at the kinds of poverty that we experience in the city of Mumbai, one which is talked about normally is the income poverty. But there is a poverty of health and education in terms of access to health and education. There's a poverty of information. There's a poverty of growing poverty of compassion. And is the poverty of compassion actually, you can see many instances where you will not find people coming to help each other or aid each other in the, in the process of difficulties, except when the disasters are of a massive scale. When we talk about the exclusion, because all the speakers have talked about the issue of inclusive growth, I think it is important to identify who are the excluded and who are the people who need to be included. Because there are a lot of invisible populations in the city, invisible in terms of their voices, in terms of their recognition, not invisible in terms of their physical presence. They are very, they are very much there. Like the Shaul Khas, the Shaul tribes, the nomadic tribes hmm, who come and go, the whole population of the uh, groups of people who have actually divided signals of Mumbai among themselves, who would actually do begging on which signal of the city? That's a whole economy which operates at that level. The new poor, which is the people affected by HIV AIDS, the growing number of sex workers in various forms, 
These are the new types of poor which are culturally poor, not necessarily economically poor. So you have people who are economically doing better, but are they really being actually gaining the dignity of living a life in the city? I think those are the kinds of issues that one needs to look at. In the morning, Amita pointed out the issue of water and sanitation, the issue of education and health in relation to the Millennium Development Goals. One of the key issues that one is, is emerging in city like Mumbai is the issue of malnutrition, is the issue of hunger, which is not being really looked at. There is a growing malnutrition and hunger among children and women that is actually affecting a large population. Can we really have a city to build a productive population on the basis of this? That's the issue that we need to look at. The last point that I would say that we actually need to understand is the whole issue of the situation of minorities. I was very much engaged in the process of 92, 93 riots in the city of Mumbai. And somebody pointed out very clearly, many riots in the city have a direct link with the deprivation linked to the basic services and amenities. From Yuva, we had brought out a study called plant segregation on Jogeshwari itself which actually outlined the deprivation of basic services, water, education, to the wards which had a dominant um, uh, population of the minority communities. And that tension between the access for few and majority being actually cut out of the access or excluded from the very basic services actually creates a climate of the riots which, in which you have the intensity of violence. To close, I think we actually need to build the cities and especially for Mumbai, the key challenge, and I hope this conference will be one contribution to, towards that direction. Will Mumbai be socially just? Will Mumbai be politically participatory? Will it be economically productive? Will it be ecologically sustainable and culturally vibrant? Will it actually follow the rule of law and adhere to a multi-sector consensus building dialogue that one is looking at, is that possible? And if that is possible, then only this city has a real future for its people. Otherwise, it will be a growth center, but growth center for few and not for the majority. Thank you very much.